Hello and welcome to Photo Education Online. I'm Larry Lursey and today I'm going to show you how to create panoramic images with the Photo Merge feature in Adobe Photoshop. Now when you're going to create something like this there's a couple things to keep in mind before you even get to the computer when you're going out to photograph the scene and I'm going to use an example here of some images I shot of the New York skyline a little while back and one of the things you want to keep in mind photographing it is first off you want to always shoot in manual mode you don't want to have it in program or aperture priority or something like that because that's going to allow for changes in the exposure and because we're going to be combining a series of images together we want to make sure that the exposure is the same in all of them so that everything matches up uh, this sky over here may be a lot brighter than the sky on this part of the image and if the camera compensates for that, you're going to be merging in images that don't quite match up and uh, it's not going to look right. So you want to figure out what your exposure is in manual mode and go from there. The second thing is overlap. You want to make sure that you overlap the images so that there's enough information that the program can go in and tell. You can see here this one, even though this image goes all the way to this building, I'm leaving all this overlap here so that it will give Photoshop plenty of information of how to do the merge. You'd probably get by with a little less than that, but um, I prefer to have a little more. This one is even more to the extreme. You can see we're really only adding on these few buildings over here onto the end, so uh, really even more overlap than we need. But again, it'll give us plenty of information, so it'll make sure we have a really nice looking merge. Now you'll note I'm using JPEGs here. I would usually do this with raw files if your camera does raw files because that gives you a lot more information to work with and you're going to end up with a better image afterwards. But it does take Photoshop a little bit longer to work with those and since we're working on a tutorial here uh, rather than have you sit and watch a progress bar for too long I'm just going to use JPEGs to show us what it looks like. Anyways once you've got your images selected the, here's the three you're going to use you'll go up to file automate photo merge and that's going to bring up this box here You've got a whole bunch of different ways that you can have Photoshop composite these I like to leave it on auto usually I'll try that and if I don't like what it comes out with I'll try some of the others and it really depends on the image which one of these works best but auto tends to do a good job generally Next thing, since I've got everything on the desktop, I'm just going to hit Add Open Files. So anything that's open right now will be added to my list of source files. And there you go. There's the three files that we have open. Blend Images Together is already clicked. I'm going to go ahead and click Geometric Distortion Correction. Hit OK. And Photoshop will go to work here. And you can see what's happening over here. It's placed all three of the images onto one file and it's going to go through and mask out which parts of each image it, it wants to keep. It looks like it's almost done here and there we go. You can see there's the three files and they've been masked uh, different parts of them depending on what they need. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is zoom in a little bit and look at the areas where I know the merge was somewhere in here make sure that I don't see any obvious errors. Look over here. Looks pretty good. Now it's a little easier with a, a cityscape like this because there's not people in it. Uh, when you have a, a city street or something there'll be a lot of people moving around which can complicate things a little bit. But we're not going to have any issues like that in this scene so I'm pretty happy with that. The first thing I would do is go in here and I'm going to save it. And we'll just call it NY Pano, save it as a Photoshop file. Now I have it with all its layers if I need to go back and, and change something later. I, I don't think I will, but just for the heck of it, I, I've got that in there. What I'll do now at this point is show you, although the, the merge itself is done, I'm going to kind of show you how I would go in and tweak it a little bit to make it look a little bit better than it already does. And we'll move a little bit quicker through this because these a lot of these techniques are covered in other tutorials but uh, just to show you what it is first thing I'm going to do here is get this rectangular marquee tool 
We're going to crop out some of the stuff that we don't really want. Leave out like that. Image crop. There we go. Get rid of all that weird edge around it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flatten this. So I'll do layer, flatten image. And I'm going to do a couple of things to make the actual image look better. First thing I'm going to do, and now normally again I'd probably do these on other layers, but since I'm just trying to show you what it will look like, I'll just do them all in one layer. We'll call this our, call that adjusted. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is go up under Image, Adjustment, Levels. And while holding down the Option key or the Alt key, I'm going to click on this little white triangle. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be adjusting my highlights. And so as long as I'm holding down the Option Alt, click on this and drag it apart, uh, across rather, and I start seeing areas that are blowing out. And probably right about there, it's a little too much blowout. So I'm going to about right there. Then I'm going to go down to the bottom end. I'm going to grab this black one and start bringing in the blacks. Now I'll start noticing things blocking up as I come in too far. As you can see down the lower left, I'm getting a lot of block up. I'll come back a little bit. I can live with a little blocking down there. There, it gives it a much nicer tone up through there. Hit OK. Compare the before and the after. Has a lot more um, pop to it. Final thing I'm going to do with this adjusted layer is I'm going to go under Filter, Topaz Labs, and this is the Topaz Adjust 4 plugin. If you don't, if you don't have Topaz, you can go to the website and download a, a, a demo of it and give this a try. And I'll put a link to that uh, down below the video. It's going to bring up a whole bunch of different looks you can do here. I'm going to go to the Photo Pop. And I'm going to come over here to Adaptive Exposure and run it way up to probably 0.5. Hit OK. Let it work. And there we go. Take a look at the before and the after. So that's what we came up with here. I think that's a kind of cool image. Zoom in a little bit you can see it. Looks nice. Hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and check out other videos on photoeducationonline.com. See you soon. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye.